All right, so in this video, I'm going to show um, how uh, you can use lots of scaling in this uh, this uh, program here to um, configure a multi GPU setup so that you can uh, avoid uh, performance overhead on your main GPU. For uh, start, I'm going to come in here to Cyberpunk run a benchmark. I'm at the um, medium preset with excessive performance and motion blur off. Everything else is just the stock medium preset. Okay, so 1080p medium. I'm getting 53 FPS inside. Image quality is alright. Not the greatest because we're at XCSS, at XCSS performance at 1080p, but it's alright. It's playable. Frame rate should get higher outside, up into the low 60s. Yeah, there we go, 62, 67, 65, 64, 60, and so on and so forth. Oh. Sorry about my reflection, it's a glossy display, but not so much I can do. So about 60 outside, a little bit under. A bit of a stutter there. So that's native GPU performance. Well, if you wanted to run frame generation on your uh, render GPU. Well, let's find out what, what would happen if you wanted to do it. So keep in mind we had a performance of about 60 outside, 50 inside. There we go. So it went from about 50 in here to, well, it stutters, but about 25, 26 with massive stuttering. Not super playable as a base frame rate, even though it is running at an output of about 50. So we halved our frame rate and then double it again to get about where we were. That's not very acceptable, and it also comes with big frame uh, image quality issues. And some uh, some uh, screen tearing. We get up to about 30 outside, that's about half of what we got without running the frame generation. And again, also stuttering outside. Now, it would be great if we could offload that load of the frame generation to a second graphics card, such as our integrated graphics so that we can essentially have our cake and eat it too, right? We can take the game performance of the A370M, but then also just directly apply frame generation to it, just essentially double the frame rate. And so that should be what we're able to do here. Let's look at that. We've got just about the same base frame that we had before. It, it really should be about the same, might be a little bit lower. Well, it's probably just run run variance. But if you look, in the frame generation, we're doubling it. 54 to 107, 52 to 106, 50, 60 to 115. It's a little bit under doubling it, it's just... If you're not locked, it's going to be a little bit different. It's, just, it's going to be, there's going to be some... Uh, stuttering in it, some frame pacing issues, and there's going to be some variance in how many, in, in, in how many frames it actually produces versus what you expect it to. It was like outside we are having a little bit lower frame rate than we had before, it was about 60 out here. I'm not really sure why that is, it shouldn't do that. But regardless, it's 
definitely a lot higher points than it was before. And then if we go to settings and video settings, we'll do a maximum FPS. Let's see, not 10, definitely not 10. Let's go about 40. And let's try about 40. And we let's unscale it and run benchmark again. Yeah, so we're locked at 40. Crimson on, we'll go from 40 to 80. And since we're locked at 40, it's just a nice, solid, smooth 80. Very nice, solid, smooth. No frame pacing issues, nothing like that. Input lag is... I've heard lower if you lock it, but I'm not entirely sure. There's a bit of a stutter there, but it's fine. Those are the kind of things you can you can put up with. Oh, screen timed out. Okay, but what if 80 isn't enough for you? What if you want 120? Well, you can come up here, and since you have extra headroom from not running it on your render card, you can go and run X3 mode. You go from 40 to 120. Okay, maybe not 100% locked, but... See, nice, solid, smooth 120. There might be some uh, image quality hit from running at uh, base FPS of 40, but it'll be. I mean, you're on an you're on an integrated graphics, so there's only so much performance you can uh, hope to have. Um, if you had a more powerful adding card, uh, if you're, so if you're on a desktop, you had a more powerful adding card, you could um, say have a base of 60 from having a more powerful render card and then if you had a more powerful uh, frame gen card you could take that 60 and export it to 240 and since you're at a base frame of 60 the image quality and the artifacting won't be nearly as bad as if you're at 40 or especially 30. Let's see 100, 120 FPS locked all throughout that and all because we took the load off of the render card and put it on the integrated graphics. And so hopefully you now know how to do that. Editing me here. I I'll, I just wanted to talk about um, what if you don't uh, use a laptop? What if you use a desktop? Um, so this is a, a desktop PC that I made a little while ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, with an Intel B580 in it, and then it, it works. It worked great. Um, but I was like, okay, so the particular game that the person I built this for uses doesn't have frame generation in it yet. Uh, FSR frame generation or XCSS frame generation wasn't a thing yet. Well, it, it was, but it wasn't. It's not in the game yet either. Um, so I decided, well, what if I use lots of scaling on it? Well, it works great on the B580, but it does have a performance hit. So what I did was I had a spare 1050 Ti lying around. And I decided, eh, I'll just throw it in there. It doesn't need a PCIe connector or anything. Just toss it in, see what happens. Um, at first, it, was, it wasn't working that great, but then I reinstalled the NVIDIA driver, and it works great now. I think a base frame of about 45, it'll double that easily, it'll triple that easily. Uh, that's at uh, 3440 by 1440p native. 
So yeah, B580 puts out a base resolution, a base uh, frame rate of 45. This can double it, triple it even, to about like 135, 136, something like that. Yeah, it works great. And uh, all of that with little to no overhead on this card. So this card is free to run the game as it wants with no uh, frame generation um, frame generation affecting it. This card handles the frame generation and it can just about do it. It uses up the entire card. I would really recommend something a little bit faster than a 1050 Ti. Like maybe a um, RX 6400 or a RX 6600 if you're really wanting a little bit more power. But um, a 1050 Ti can can do it. I wouldn't use it at 4K, but it can do it at 1440p. And even 1440p ultra wide apparently. That's just how you set up a uh, multi-GPU setup for uh, lesser scaling. It doesn't have to be the same brand, right? This could be a NVIDIA card instead of an Intel card. This could be an AMD card. Actually, in, uh, in fact, AMD cards are a little bit better for this than um, than NVIDIA cards. And apparently Intel cards are pretty good for it too, but I haven't really experimented with it on, uh, on the B580. Say you're a uh, 4060 player. You have a monitor that's for competitive shooters. Maybe it's a 240Hz 1080p monitor or higher if you're playing Valorant or uh, League or whatever. Um, but you also play you know, single player games like Cyberpunk like um, Witcher, like uh, God of War, those kinds of games. And you're only getting like maybe 60 FPS locked. Well, just take an old card, like an RX 6400, RX 5500, something like that. Just toss that in there. Now you can make that 60 FPS into 240 FPS. So that's the power of a uh, multi-GP setup.